Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today, I'm finally finishing the entryway and we're going to give it a complete makeover. If you've been following along, you've seen me DIY some projects for this space and today we are finally putting it all together. I also wanna thank Bye for sponsoring today's video. I picked up a few items for this space and I'll also be sharing more about their International Women's Day initiative a little bit later in the video. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and let me show you guys the current state of the entryway. Dun da da da! Here is the entryway and honestly not much to look at. We still have our beautiful mudroom here. I've managed to keep it clean because we've mostly been using the back door but yeah this has been working out great. And then we have our beautiful light still. I love this DIY so much and I'm so glad you guys love it as much as I do because I think it just makes this space feel so much more cute and special. Right now the space just looks a little sad so I want it to be very inviting and the first thing I want to do is to paint all of the walls. These are still that gray color while everything else is atrium white and I definitely want to change this up. This is a very orange toned wood as you guys can tell and there's also a lot of wear and tear. There's like some splotches going on and I actually asked you guys over on Instagram if I should paint or stain this and staining one so that's what we're going to do today and I think that's going to look so good and when it comes to this door we definitely want to replace it. I'm just trying to figure out what exactly I want. So in this makeover, I want to do something temporary so that I can decide what to do with this door. So we're going to paint it. The wood on the outside of the door is actually really rough. And inside you can see a little bit of that. And also something that really bothers me is the fact that this doorknob is off-centered from that. So I don't know, that just doesn't look right to me. So yes, this will be going. But for now, we're going to keep her and make her a little cuter. And one last thing, someone asked what this was in the entryway and it's for our mail. So it's this little door and the mailman puts the mail in here. But yeah, this needs to change as well. To get started, I'm prepping the area by taping off my mudroom because I do not want any paint or dust to get in there. And then I'm also going to remove nails and fill in holes. I also wanted to show you the mood board for this space. So even though it is really small, I saw a lot of potential here and I just wanted it to feel very inviting. So I'm mixing wood tones with black accents and some fun patterns. Okay, I'm ready to get rid of this orange stained wood. There's a layer of varnish and stain and I know underneath there's some beautiful neutral wood tones. So if you're dealing with the same thing, you can totally sand it off. However, I do have my whole living room set up and I don't wanna get dust everywhere. So instead I'm going to use a paint stripper, which is going to be a lot better for my situation. And I also did grab Easy Off. So this has been a popular hack for getting rid of stains. However, I saw that there were mixed reviews on this technique. So if you guys have tried this out before, let me know if you think it's worth it. And it should be a pretty quick process, so let's get started. With this paint stripper, you want to use a paintbrush and make sure that you're wearing nitrile gloves to protect your hands as well as safety goggles. And since I'm just trying to get off the top layer, I did not put a super thick coat on there, but I made sure that it was evenly coated across the entire piece. I also did put a little bit on that wood trim underneath, but my plan was to paint this part and then have the wood slab stand out on its own. I'm gonna place plastic wrap on top of that to keep the gel from drying out and everything sealed in, and it should do its magic after about 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, so while we wait for that to dry, I wanted to show you guys some of the pieces that I picked up from Fi for the entryway. You guys know that I love Fi and I'm excited to partner up with them this month for their International Women's Day campaign. I've used a lot of their pieces for previous makeovers on my channel, but if you're not familiar with them, they're basically an online shop and an app with thousands of items from brands for your home. And one thing that I really love about shopping on Fi is that when you buy an item, you are supporting a small business. So all of their pieces are made by independent artists and small business owners. and there's 
seriously so much to choose from, from their prints to rugs to home decor. And in case you didn't know, International Women's Day is this Tuesday on March 8th. It is a global day of recognition for social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. And I think it's super important to celebrate, especially being a woman myself. And this year, Fi is partnering up with Women for Women International again to donate five pounds from each framed print sale. And all the proceeds go to aid women across the world. There are so many pieces to choose from. Each of these pieces are made by a diverse group of talented women, and I love every single one of them. It was definitely hard to choose from this collection, but I did pick up this one from Maggie Stevenson. And if this style looks familiar to you, you might recognize her work from right behind me. So I thought this was just the perfect piece to give my space a little bit of a refresh. This one is called Womenhood, and it comes in two different colors. So I picked up this one in terracotta, and I think it's so beautiful. I'm gonna hang this right behind me and if you guys want to check it out and support the cause as well I'll put the link down below and for this makeover I did want to keep the decor kind of minimal because we have a lot going on in such a small space and one of the first pieces I picked up is this one oh my god I love it so much this is by Cosmo Living from Fi and I love the shape of it they have so many different ones to choose from and this is just so unique I love the little speckling that's going on as well. It's just so, so gorgeous. I can't wait to style it. And I'll definitely link this as well as some of my other pieces from Fi in the description box down below. And next up, we have a mirror. So this one is a classic round mirror. My room's really messy, so please don't look at that. But this is just brass and it comes in a bunch of different colors. So I think this is going to be perfect. I did grab a couple of different mirror options. So I think this is gonna be a really good one, whether it's for the entryway or maybe a different room. And then lastly, I was so surprised to see this on Fi, but they have a shop on there that carries live plants. So of course I had to grab one. I got this tiny little ZZ. It is just so cute. It came with the pot, which is perfect. And if you're a beginner to plants, this is a great one because it is virtually killable. I think this is going to work well for the entryway because it doesn't get a lot of light. So this is just going to be so cute. So that's everything that I got from Fi. Don't forget to shop the International Women's Day collection and support the cause. All the info will be in my description box for you guys to shop. And now I think everything should be dry so it's time to paint. It's been a couple of hours and you can already see that the wood has changed colors. This looks really promising so let's see what color we're going to get. Now it is time to scrape it all off and you can see how easily this top layer comes off. This step was seriously so satisfying to me and I could already see that the wood underneath was looking really good. I'm noticing some dark spots on the wood here and I want to get rid of that as best as I can. So I'm going to try this trick that I found online. Let's see if this works. To lift some of those darker spots, I used Barkeeper's Friend and I mixed in a little bit of water to create a paste. I learned this hack after doing a quick Google search and apparently it creates some type of chemical reaction to get rid of those wood stains. You can really use any type of metal polish with oxalic acid in it. I just happen to have Barkeeper's Friend on me and it is essentially works as a wood bleach. After that's all on there, I'm going to let it dry for about 30 minutes. Okay, so that worked out a lot better than I thought. You can definitely see that it pulled some of that off. So I'm going to do a couple more coats. I think I'm going to cover the whole thing so that it's less splotchy, but so far this is looking really good. So seeing that this was lifting the wood so well, I decided to put it on the entire piece just to even out the tone and I did a thin layer the second time around. I just let that sit for another 30 minutes and then scraped it all off and I think it was looking so, so good. You can totally repeat this a couple more times, but I think after the second time it was good to go. 
So for this wall, I really wanted it to be a feature wall and I wanted something subtle that wouldn't clash with the black walls over here and then with the door and the lights, I feel like there's a lot going on. So I landed on doing picture frame molding and I think this is gonna look perfect in here. I have all of my molding right over here. And I just went online and used a calculator to figure out all the measurements. Before I cut all these, I'm going to plan it out on the wall to make sure that we have it just right. So for my wall, I'm leaving five and a half inches from the edge and also in between each of the frames. And that calculator that I used was just so helpful in laying out all the measurements. This way I knew exactly where I needed to draw each one of my marks so that everything was evenly spaced out. I used a level to make sure that everything was nice and straight and I did want to make a note that my walls are a little curved. So instead of going with a wall which was totally not straight, I just went with the level and this helped out a ton. Okay, I think this is better. We have all the spacing and my only concern is that my walls are not straight. So what I want to do first is actually just to cut out all the vertical pieces. That way we can make sure that it looks good and that all of the horizontal pieces will fit perfectly. Before I start any cuts, I'm going to draw a diagonal line to indicate which way the angle should be cut. This is especially important to make sure that all the grooves match up. This way there's no confusion and you don't waste any wood. And I'm basically just gonna cut them all off at that angle. So for my walls, the vertical trim is 80 inches. And when I cut these mitered edges, I'm measuring it from the outside angle to make sure that I get the longest side to match up with our measurements. And since I want these to be pretty exact, I'm sneaking up on the line by moving it closer and closer to the blade until I get it right on that line. If you watch my DIY canvas video, this process is pretty much the same. And I think that doing that project prior to this one, it just gave me a lot more knowledge and confidence to try the picture frame molding on my walls. All right, it is time to nail these in. And since we already did all of our measuring and leveling, all I needed to do now was to line up the trim with the pencil marks and brad nail them in. These trim pieces are quite flexible, so I was able to secure them on even with the slight curves and bulges out of my wall. So now that we know the exact layout of the vertical trim, I'm going to go ahead and just take the measurements in between each one. These are all gonna be slightly different from each other, especially since my walls are not straight. So cutting the horizontal pieces after the vertical ones ensures that you get an exact measurement. And to make sure that I didn't confuse any of them, I also labeled the back of them and this helped out so much. Okay, we're like nowhere near done, but look, ah, it is so good. And I even love how this white looks against the gray. So if you were to do picture frame molding, that is a really cool idea. It just makes the space feel so much taller, especially when I step back. Ah, love it. Like I mentioned before, my walls are not perfectly straight. So if you look right here, you could see there's a bigger gap. So I'm gonna put one more nail right here. That way it sits a little bit closer and it looks more even. Okay, moment of truth. <sighs> Yay, it's perfect, it's perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, that looks so good. Wait, I need to sand that. So as I always say, caulk and spackle is a home DIYer's best friend to get a nice professional finish on your projects. So I caulked the outside and the inside of the trim just to make sure that all the gaps were covered. And I also used the spackle to fill up the nail holes. Okay, I'm in my painting outfit. It is pretty late now, but I'm determined to get at least one coat of paint on these walls. I'm gonna start by cutting in and then using my handy dandy paint sprayer to get the rest of it. You guys already know the drill. We're going to paint the wall with Atrium White by Benjamin Moore. And I'm seriously so happy that I went with this color for the entire house. It's just been the perfect color to add a slight warm hue to our white walls. And now that we have the picture frame molding, this is such a great simple way to make a statement in such a small area like this one. 
This is what the setup looks like to start spraying. I wanted to make sure that I protected everything. And I also put my ring light in here because there's no lighting. So hopefully I get a good shot. So you guys saw that this morning I finished the wall and I think it's looking so good in here. And today is another painting and staining day. So we're going to finally change up this wall. I just sanded it down a little bit and I hope no one comes for me in the comments, but I am not going to prime the door just because we are going to be replacing it in a few months and hopefully even sooner than that, but I'm still trying to decide on a color. So I thought that I would test out a black door by painting this one behind me. That way I know for sure if I want to invest in a new door that is black. I'm just gonna paint it the same black that I have around my trim as well as my back door and I have a really good feeling about this. Okay, so this small cord of paint has lasted me quite a while and I've used it on my back door and also for my kitchen and living room windows and now for this project. So if you've been wanting to refresh a space on a budget, grab a quart of paint. This is such a quick and easy way to change things up without breaking the bank. And if you just wanted to refresh a door, a paint sample would be totally enough. I felt like there was a lot of wood going on in this area, so a solid color is just a nice way to break things up. Black paint has definitely been my go-to to modernize any outdated items in my home, especially with this door. You can instantly see how it just transforms the look of it. In case anyone was missing Brian with his blue shirt. <laughs> Am I doing good, honey? Yes, look at that technique. Have I improved? I don't know about that, as long as you don't drip. A little moment of appreciation for this wood. I think it's looking so, so good. We are prepped and ready to stain, so I'm going to use a wood conditioner first and then I'll go on top with our stain. This wood conditioner is going to help us avoid blotchy stains and after application, it should be ready in about 30 minutes for stain. And for the stain, I chose the color Hazelwood, which is really light and also has a bit of gray. And I think this is gonna help tone down the wood. I just did one layer of this and after that dried down, I did a couple of layers of matte polyurethane to protect the wood. So for that trim underneath, I really did not like this crown molding type situation. So I wanted it to blend into the wall color. So I just painted it that same atrium white. I think it really helped it disappear and also streamlines it into one flat piece without that extra detail. And it makes it look a bit more modern and minimal, which I totally love. My plan in the long run is actually to get rid of this ledge situation. I think it'll just open up the room more, but a few of you have actually told me to keep it. so. I'm still debating if we're going to keep it or get rid of it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. So I just took off all the tape in here and I think it's looking so good. And before we style, there's one thing that I need to do, which is to get rid of this privacy film. It's honestly been bothering me since we moved in and now it is time to take it off. Oh, it already looks so much better. Let's style. The first thing that's going back in here is the DIY light pendant. And in case you missed the video on this, this is an anthropology inspired petal light. And I think it adds such a fun, whimsical touch to the space. And I'm really glad that you guys like this project as well. And if you wanna see how I made it, I'll put a link to the video below. And of course I had to place my DIY console table front and center and the wall just looks so good behind it. This project cost me under $50 to make and I also have a full tutorial. So if you guys wanna see how to make one for yourself, I'll also have that linked. So I was trying to see if the circle mirror would work in here, but I felt like it was just too small, even though it fit perfectly within the picture frame molding. I think a larger size would have worked better. So instead I placed this arch mirror here and I'm loving how it looks on the console table. This is just the perfect spot to check yourself out before heading out the door. 
I sprinkled in a couple more decor items that I got from Fi that I shared with you guys earlier, including this basket that I got as a set last year. I think it works perfect here. And of course, no entryway is complete without a rug. And I really love the pattern on this one. I think it ties everything together perfectly. And even though it is a light rug in a high traffic area, this one is washable. So whenever it gets dirty, I can throw it into the washer and it's as good as new. This came out better than I could have imagined. And before I show it to you guys, let's take a look back at when I first moved in here. Nothing very exciting was happening. It was pretty basic and boring. And even though this is a small space, I feel like all the DIYs we did made such a difference. And without further ado, here is the after. Finishing this entryway just makes our living room feel so much more complete and I am just in love with it and I hope you guys like it too. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and which DIYs you guys like the best from this makeover. It's been so much fun sharing all these projects with you guys and seeing your feedback and I truly appreciate you tuning in every week. And again, a huge thank you to Fire for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out their International Women's Day collection. All that info will be down below and if you guys want to see what I'm up to day to day, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I post on there basically every day and that is it for me today thank you so much for watching stay inspired and i'll see you in the next one bye